Welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. My name is David Gafford, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at the Barbie NATO charcoal lighting solution. We've got it all coming up. There are so many different options available to us when it comes to lighting charcoal, and one of those solutions is called the Barbie NATO. And what it does is it takes an electric charcoal lighting appliance and combines it with a chimney that's used for lighting charcoal. It combines those two items together, and it's pretty unique in the space for what it does. And here at the Barbecue Lab, we're privileged to be able to have multiple testers who help us with the product testing that we do. And so what I want to do is I want to introduce you to my friend Will, who's going to come on and help us learn more about this product. All right, this is Will, and Will has been helping us test the Barbie NATO. And so, Will, uh, tell me a little bit about what you've been doing in barbecue. I am just a weekend barbecuer, kind of a novice at it, getting my feet wet with a Kamado-style grill. All right, for starting the Kamado, I've been using a variety of on-the-shelf products from the tumbleweed to different wax starters, kind of experimenting to see what I like best and what works best for me. Being a novice at this, having the opportunity to use a product like the Barbie NATO really kind of changed my grilling experience. It gave me the opportunity to grill on a weekday where I may not have as much time to wait for the starter to kick in and get a full set of coals going in the grill. Yeah, I mean, that's the classic problem, right? For those of you who have a charcoal grill, starting that charcoal grill, it takes a lot of time. I mean, for the average chimney of coals, how long did it usually take you to light a chimney? It was a good 15, 20 minutes before I had a set of coals that I was ready to put in the grill. Right, so 15 or 20 minutes on the weeknight, I mean, you get home from work, 5.30, 6 o'clock. By the time you get the grill going, you're not eating until 7.38, right? Right. So some of the advantages to an electric starter are that it's environmentally friendly and it increases the speed at which you can get your grill up and running. So one of the things that uh, I want to do here before we go outside and light this up is, Will, walk us through the two different pieces and kind of what they do. All right, the piece right in front of me is the chimney that comes with the Barbie NATO package. Uh, Size-wise, it'll hold a pretty large amount of coals if you want to do, uh, you know, a full chimney's worth in your grill or even just some small fires. I've experimented with uh, even just cooking some burgers or getting ready to smoke and I just want a couple handfuls. It will do a great job of lighting those. It will also light the whole chimney. All right, on the side of the chimney, you'll notice that there's a metal tube. What the tube does is focus the heat from the wand onto the coals at the base of the chimney to get that fire really cranking and get those coals nice and hot in a quick and efficient manner. Okay, so that's one half of it, and the other half is the wand, right? The wand, yes. Plugs into any standard three-prong AC outlet, and then has the heat end at the top, and a trigger switch at the bottom. And so to light this one, you actually pull the switch back, right? You pull the switch, and you hold it. And you hold it. So is that switch actually easy to hold for the whole entire time when you're lighting it up? There is some resistance holding that switch. Uh, the time that you're required to hold that's recommended on the box, only six to 10 minutes is not bad. And then you can also use this once the coals are in your grill to give it a boost and to add, maybe add some extra charcoal. You can use the heat and the fan from this gun uh, later on in your cook if you need to. Okay, so with this, with this gun, I mean, did you find that it took the full six to 10 minutes to get a chimney or a half a chimney? How long did you actually have to have that on to get the coals lit inside that chimney? When I timed it, I had coals going within about three minutes. All right, so with the switch, the button that actually activates the wand, it's something you have to hold on the whole entire time, right? It is. There is no mechanism on the actual wand to lock the switch. The entire time that you're using the wand, you have to have the switch depressed. After the first couple of minutes, it's not a problem. By the time you get to six to 10 minutes, your thumb's getting a little tired there. <laughs> well, I understand why they probably can't actually have it lock on. I'm sure it's a massive fire hazard to be able to turn on a basically a blowtorch and then walk away, right? Certainly. Well, I'm sure there's some ways if you uh, use your ingenuity, you could probably make that switch stay on. But uh, for liability reasons, let's just uh, say that you could probably figure that out on your own. 
so, I mean, we've used this, what, four, five, six times? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I'm seeing here on the end of this is I'm seeing that the end of the actual wand is a little bit deformed when it comes to the guard around the outside. Um, I'm going to guesstimate that that has to do with the fact that you have this coming in such close contact with a fully lit chimney. And with that thing being so close to the chimney itself, if that's getting so hot, it might deform a little bit. Is that Sir, what you think? Absolutely. If you're not careful with how you insert it or remove it from the chimney when it's ripping hot towards the end of the light process, uh, you could easily bend that metal. Okay. So that, I mean, that's just something to think about. I mean, but technically this is a guard around it. It's not like this is actually serving a purpose other than heat diffusion, right? Correct. Another thing to, to point out is that it comes with a bottle opener. So if you're out there drinking a beer or soda or pick your favorite, you got a bottle opener with you. But the thing that I find is I use this for setting the thing down after you fired it up. Because this thing gets so hot when you're done. It, for example, if I'm going to set this down on this table, say that I just, I just lit up a whole thing of charcoal. Let me just set this down on the table. And that's what, that's what it wants to do, right? Getting it to sit perfectly on there, even still, I have it touching my table. Absolutely. Which this, we're talking about a wood table and uh, wooden fire. Last time I checked, that uh, it's not a great combo for a table you want to keep around. No, not at all. So, <clears throat> what do you do with this? Once you've actually lit something up, what do you do with it? Every time I used the lighter, I used it outside on the driveway, and I was able to set it down on the cement driveway to ensure that it was on a safe surface for that kind of heat. Yeah, I, I find that a lot of times when I'm using uh, this or the loof lighter or something else that gets really hot when I'm lighting it up, um, I'll try to find a different way to hang it. And so I've actually got uh, a nail uh, screwed in the side of the garage where I can hang it from a nail and it actually keeps that up in the air so it doesn't touch anything. Uh, but a lot of times I'm sitting it this way so that the cable hangs down, which actually tilts it away from the wall as opposed to if I'm trying to do it this way and it wants to touch the wall down here. So I mean, just something to think about is once you've used this and you want to go store it, you, know, you got to put it someplace that's not going to light anything on fire. <laughs> but that's what I find that's intriguing about this is uh, when the missus, who's behind the camera right there, shout out to the missus, when the missus is saying, hey, let's have burgers tonight, let's uh, fire up a Kamado, and we look at the clock and it's 6.15, I'm going to break out something like this to light the charcoal. I'm probably not going to throw it in here and uh, I'm probably not gonna throw it in just a chimney. I'm gonna use some kind of electronic lighter to get it fired up and going so we can eat before seven o'clock. So um, had, did you ever use this outside of the chimney? I did, I used it inside the Kamado directly. I put a pile of charcoal in there and uh, used it to light the lump charcoal. It did a pretty good job. I mean, I know that I've used and reviewed the Loof lighter and I know that I've used and reviewed the Barbecue Dragon Chimney of Insanity. So when I first saw this setup, I went, okay, so this is kind of a chimney of insanity with a loof lighter, and they're marrying those two things together. So that's where I think it's kind of unique in the market, where it's actually trying to bring those, those two technologies into one. Well, I mean, so really what we need to do is we need to sit and light this thing up, and so Absolutely. why don't we go outside and light some charcoal? Sure. Okay, so let's see how what that end looks like. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's not like completely flaming red, but still malleable. 
Yeah. I'd just be careful where you set it down. Right, I think so too. I wouldn't set it on like these. These are poly, and I wouldn't set them on like the on the side shelves. Mm -hmm. And is this cool to the touch? It is. Yeah, cool to the touch. So. Let's see all the way down in there. Here we go. All right, so we ran the test on the Barbie NATO. What did we walk away with? I mean, one of the things I saw that I found surprising was how hot the outside of that chimney glowed. I mean, that thing was blazing orange. It was, it does get very hot. It's a testament to the direct heat that the wand provides to the base of that charcoal chimney. And it's what really gives you the quick, efficient burn you need to get the holes up and running quickly. Well, and you talked about those baffles that are there in the end of that receiver. What is it about the baffles that you think makes it more efficient? I think the baffles really help direct that hot air into the base of the chimney, which creates the vortex action, which gets the heat to all the coals throughout the chimney, it gives you that much more even burn that you're looking for to get all the coals lit as quickly as possible. Because it's really focusing it down and to the left, right? I mean, so it's like kind of shooting it around the chimney like this? It is. Yeah, so that's really intriguing. I, how, hot it, how hot that thing gets is fascinating to me. <laughs> Um, the other thing is the fact that you're holding it on so much of that time. I mean, you got to hold it on for a long time, right? I mean, we're talking six to ten minutes to fire up what we got going there, but that stuff was hot. It, it's definitely hot. It takes a little bit getting used to to hold on to it, but it uh, can be well worth it in the end. So this time we lit up some briquettes, right? So we didn't use lump, but when you've used lump, what's been your experience? Uh, the lump heats almost a little bit faster. I think that's because of the uneven air pockets you get with the different size charcoal and the lump charcoal. With the lump charcoal, you do get more sparks that come out of the top of the chimney during the lighting process. I know that whenever I'm lighting up one of the Kamados that we have around here and I use one of those electric fire starters, I mean, depending on the different type of lump, I get more sparks than others. I mean, at least my experience has been, depending on the type of lump, some of it sparks way more than others. Have you seen that? It's possible, and I definitely have a favorite lump charcoal that I tend to lean to, so it could be that that one is just uh, a sparkier charcoal. Well, I can't wait in the future. I've already got some plans on some charcoal tests, so in one of these days when it's not, you know, 25 degrees outside, I think it's going to be time to run some charcoal tests here in the future. All right, so that's our review on the Barbie NATO chimney and fire starter. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, why don't you hit that subscribe button? We'd love to have you around as we continue to review the best in outdoor cooking and outdoor living. I'm David. This is Will. And we're thrilled to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Can't wait to see you next time.